Hello everyone, welcome again. So today's lesson will be on the industrial chemistry option. And in the previous few lessons we've been talking about synthetic detergents and soap. And so in today's lesson we'll be focusing on soap and its impact on the environment. Okay? Because everyone uses soap and synthetic detergents. So what is that doing to our environment and how do we mitigate those effects as much as possible? Okay? So the first thing we need to understand is what a builder is. So detergents contain, so we're talking about synthetic detergents, contain chemicals called builders. Okay? So these are phosphate and silicate compounds that make the water slightly alkaline. Okay? So a builder is just a, a phosphate or silicate compound um, that makes water slightly alkaline. They prevent the mineral ions in hard water from stirring up dirt particles. Okay? Now, you, phosphate builders in detergents cause problems if washed into waterways. The phosphates cause algal blooms, which deplete the oxygen um, in waterways when they die and decompose. Okay? So remember eutrophication from chemical monitoring and management. So the phosphate builders in, um, in synthetic detergents can actually cause algal blooms because they act as a fertilizer which deplete the oxygen in waterways when they die and decompose. Okay? When they die and decompose, they actually consume oxygen. So um, they can cause a reduction in dissolved oxygen content in the water. So we call this process eutrophication. So many modern non-ionic detergents no longer use phosphates for builders, obviously, because we don't want it to cause eutrophication. So we have this little tick of phosphate-free. Um, Similar to you know chickens being hormone free and things like that, people like to just stamp um, different labels on things. So these detergents do not carry the risk of forming algal blooms when they are washed into waterways. Okay, so if we accidentally wash them into waterways, that's okay because they don't contain phosphate, which will cause algal blooms. They are slowly replacing the older anionic detergents that contain sulfates. So very slowly we're getting to that um, to having no sulfate, uh, no phosphate. In our in our fertilizer in our detergents. Okay, so biodegradability is another issue. So the first artificial detergents developed contained branched hydrocarbon uh, tails. So you can see here, this is our soap, but it's got lots of branches going in all sorts of different directions off the main chain. Okay. This made it very very hard for them to be broken down by natural agents. Okay, so. These sort of branch chains are much more difficult to break down um, in a natural way compared to a, just a straight chain um, single um, branch molecule. Okay? They cause the waterways to foam and poison aquatic life. So sometimes you see f like pictures of foaming waterways and that could be caused by these anionic detergents that have branched structures. Okay? Now, Again, with most modern detergents, most modern detergents are biodegradable. So this is a nice version of that. Their molecules contain straight hydrocarbon chains, just like soap, similar to um, fatty acid soap or natural organic soap. And this allows them to be broken down more easily than older detergents, okay? Because they're straight chain. Um, and if you think about it, straight chains are usually easier to break down mainly because if you think about our human body, we tend to break down fats that are saturated much more easily than more complex fats. Um, so that's a, that's a way of thinking about it. Okay? So that's basically the entire um, major environmental concerns regarding soaps. So eutrophication and the phosphate builders is one major issue. And biodegradability is the other major issue. Okay? So we'll move on to the questions segment, and we'll see if we can um, develop some answers uh, around these concepts. So why are detergents more likely to cause eutrophication than soaps? Well, detergents contain chemicals such as phosphates, phosphates which can cause algal blooms. Okay? So soaps rarely contain um, phosphates because they're made from fatty acids like stera, uh, like steric acid. Or, so they don't have sulfate there, 
which means that they can't uh, they don't have phosphate there which means they can't fertilize algae which means you can't form an algal bloom from soap okay whereas synthetic detergents contain phosphates and thus can cause algal blooms from that why do some detergents contain builders again a to prevent mineral ions from dirtying the water okay so in a hard water situation it stops the mineral ions from uh, stirring up dirt in the water, okay? And that's why we have builders. There's three advantages of synthetic detergents compared to soaps. Um, so the main one is synthetic detergents will still foam in hard water instead of forming a scum. So that's the main, main reason. Non-ionic synthetic detergents are less irritating to the skin than some ion anionic soaps. So because the anionic soap draws out a lot of water, because it's quite polar, non-ionic detergents don't draw as, out as much water and are less irritating to the skin, which is why a lot of people don't use soap anymore, because it's quite harsh on their skin. And cationic synthetic detergents can be used to soften fabrics or to make hair conditioner. Okay, So these cationic detergents can help to... Um, to soften fabrics or be used in hair conditioners um, where a soap wouldn't be able to do that, okay? So, is this detergent biodegradable? And give a reason for your answer. So we've got an anionic head here, the main branch here, and a couple of little side branches. So no, it's not biodegradable or not as biodegradable. The branched carbon chains are not biodegradable. Okay, so when we have branched carbon chains, it means that we have a less biodegradable structure than if we were to have just a straight chain molecule. Okay? And what differences between modern detergents and early detergents make modern deter detergents more environmentally friendly? Well, older detergents contain branched car uh, carbon chains, making it very difficult for them to be broken down in nature. Okay? Modern detergents, in contrast, contain straight, unbranched chains, similar to an organic soap. Okay? Older detergents contain phosphate builders, which would, could cause eutrophication if they got into a waterway, whereas modern detergents are non -phosphoric, uh, use non-phosphoric builders instead. Okay? So they don't have phosphate in them, so even if they are washed into a waterway, they won't cause eutrophication. So that concludes today's lesson on the environmental impacts of soap. So we've looked at what are the major, two major environmental impacts. One is eutrophication from the phosphate builders, and the other is biodegradability. And we looked at how we can mitigate them using modern technology. Okay? And this concludes our lessons on, or our series on surfactants and synthetic detergents. And so I look forward to seeing you at our next lesson. Mm -hmm.